heard many testimonies in our church yes. of people that have been delivered. Yes. And, the, and there ought to be a difference between our uh, poverty level and the poverty level of the world. Yes. In other words, if there's 7% unemployed in the world, it ought to be 2 or 3% in the church. It ought not be 7% of us. Right. You right. understand? Right. There should be a difference between us and them. Yes. Because God said he was going to make a difference. Amen. That's what he said. Amen. So we've got to learn how to believe God and get our prayers answered. And you know, it's not a matter of getting our prayers answered, it's believing that they are answered. Yes. And sometimes we think, well, they're not answered because this, that, or the other. Mm -hmm. But they are always answered. It's just that we're like in the hall waiting for the answer to come to us. Because <laughs> God has said this. If, if you yeah. pray the prayer, God has already dispatched his angels yeah. with the word yeah. and the answer. So it is coming. Yes. It is coming. Right. And we've got to believe it with all of our heart yeah. that there is a distinction between the world. I don't believe the world uh, ought to be better off in any way. Now, I'm not talking about better off when I'm talking about being a millionaire and having a whole lot of money and all that. But I'm talking about as God opening doors and making ways for his people, I believe there should be a distinction between what happens to us when we get in trouble and what happens to the world when they get in trouble. Because when we get in trouble, we can go to God and say, Lord, I'm your child. And I Solicit your help. I want your help. I need your help. And I'm trusting you. But the world can't say I'm your child because they're not. So that all they can do is go to the doctor or go to the lawyer or go to whoever they think is going to give a favor. But we can go to God and say, I need favor. Whether it's for the doctor or a lawyer or, or whoever it's with. You know, a neighbor or whoever it is with. Relationships. We can say, Lord, I need favor. And God will give us favor. Sometimes he'll give us something to do like he did to Moses. And so we've got to learn to do what he tells us to do. Even though it may seem insignificant, we've got to do it in order to get what God has had for us. All right, the next scripture. Exodus 9 and 4. Exodus 9 and 4. And the Lord will make a difference between the livestock of Israel. Now here you go again. And the livestock of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So nothing shall die of all that belongs to the children of Israel. Now do you see what he says? The Lord will make a distinction here between the livestock of Israel and that of Egypt so that no animal that belongs to the Israelites shall die. He said, Pharaoh, I, I'm, I'm going to show you who's God here. Yeah. I'm going to make a distinction between yes. them and us. It's a them and us. It's a them and us. He's going to make a distinction between his children and the other fellow's children. <laughs> oh, bless his name. A distinction. All right. The next scripture. Uh, Exodus 9 and 8. Nine and eight. Mm -hmm. So the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, mm -hmm. Take for yourselves hand, handfuls of ashes from a furnace, mm -hmm. and let Moses scatter it toward the heavens in the sight of God. Mm -hmm. the, the Lord. And it will become fine dust in all the land of Egypt. And it will cause boils that wow. break out in sores on man and beasts throughout all the land of Egypt. Whoa. Then they took ashes from the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses scattered them toward heaven, and they caused boils that break out in sores on man and beasts. Mm. This is the plague of the boils. Now, God said, <laughs> look, he didn't listen to, a, to us this first time. So we're going to take, I want you to take, uh, to Moses and Aaron, take handfuls of soot, or ashes, 
from the furnace and toss them into the air. And it's going, we're in the, uh, where are you reading? Uh, 9 and 8. Exodus, Exodus 9 and 8. And 9 read. And it's going to be dust over all the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And festering boils are going to break out on men and animals throughout all the land. So they did exactly what God said do. And the boils broke out on men and the animals. And the magicians, they, they couldn't stand before Moses because there's so many boils on them. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. He still didn't let the children go. We're talking about nothing but the blood of Jesus. In other words, the blood is what separates us from them. We believe the blood covers us. Amen. They don't know anything about that. As a matter of fact, they think that's silliness. As a matter of fact, I remember a, a preacher that came here, a teacher. He was a good teacher, except he didn't have a good uh, handle on the blood. And he said, we were praying, we prayed uh, a prayer like, we plead the blood of Jesus. He said he never saw that in the Bible before. Well, you, you know, you don't have to see that in the Bible to say it. Because that's what we're doing when we say we plead the blood. In other words, we know the dividing line yes. between them and us. Yes. That, that means the children of the devil and the children of God. Yes. We're the children of God, and it's the blood that we depend on yes. for the sanctification of our soul, the saving of our soul, the healing of our body, yes. the deliverance of whatever it is that we need to be delivered from, we believe that Christ's blood atones for all of that. Amen. We believe that's it. Yes. The, the blood, and, and we also believe that the blood has never lost its power. Amen. We believe that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whatever Amen. and whoever he was back in Moses' time, we believe that same God is working today to deliver us for whatever we need deliverance for. Whatever it is that we need deliverance for, that same God is working. All we have to do is listen for what... See, in every one of these cases, God told them to do something. And it didn't have anything to do with their lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? In other words, sometimes we say, well, the Lord might do this for me if maybe I had fasted for five days or maybe if I had prayed all night or maybe if I had done this. He, did, he gave them some very natural things to do. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Things that they could do. And Moses did every one of them. Yeah. I'm not saying that you shouldn't fast or, or nothing like that. I mean, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying sometimes we doubt God because of something we think we didn't do yeah. or something we think we did no all you to do is what he told, told you to do yeah. he told Moses and Aaron get the, the hands full of this dirt or soot and throw it up in the air and it's going to become the, it, well, dust over the whole land and it's going to break boils out of the people yeah. mm -hmm. so I mean just get the handful of dust and throw it up there. I mean, at least you figure, find out if it's going to work. <laughs> you know, if, if something's not working, at least you can do what he said do Amen. to see if it'll work. Amen. And of course, in this case, Moses just kept on falling down. And even though he did what God told him to do, Pharaoh didn't let him go. And he even said that that was going to happen. But Moses was still trusting in God. Yes. Yeah. Because, you see, we're going to get to the point because it's always the blood that covers. Okay. All right, let's read the next scripture. Exodus 9 and 19. Exodus 9 and 19. Therefore, sit now and gather your livestock and all, <clears throat> excuse me, and all that you have in the field. For the hail shall come down on every man and every animal which is found in the field and is not brought home and they shall die. Keep on reading. He who feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his livestock flee to the houses. But he who did not regard the word of the Lord left his servants and his livestock in the field. Mm -hmm. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand towards heaven, that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt, on man, on beast, and on every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched out his rod towards heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail and fire darted to the ground, and the, and the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. So that so there was hail and fire mingled with the hail. So very heavy. Wow. <laughs> there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. And the hail struck throughout the whole land of Egypt and all that was in the field, both man and beast. And the hail struck every herb of the field and broke every tree in the field. Only the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, there was no hail. Did you hear that? <clears throat> <laughs> Only in the land of Goshen, oh, they do. where the children of Israel were, there was no hail. I'm talking about the Hold difference up, that right. God will make Thank for you. his children. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. By God. Yeah. And those that don't belong to him. <clears throat> he knows how to protect his yeah. folks. Isn't that, so? that might have been the next, I think I'm going to read down to the next one. So did you get the next uh, 10, 10 and 13? Hail struck through all the land of Egypt, but there was no hail where the Israelites where were. Is don't you think God can knows how, God knows how, he said, to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust until the day of reckoning is to be found. He knows how to do it. Only God knows how to do it. We don't know how to do it, but God knows how to do it. Yes, he does. And he will do it. He just wants you to be ready for it. You just be ready by doing whatever it is he asks you to do, Hallelujah. which is always something easy. Yes. It, amen. Now, all he, see, all, all he did for, for in this case was he told the Israelites to make sure that all of your flock were inside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is that what he said? That's what he said. Just everybody, if you just put all yours inside, because everything that's on the outside is going to go down. <laughs> you put yours on the inside. So, I mean, simple stuff. Yes. Nothing hard to do. Just simple stuff. Mm -hmm. But God knows what to do to get you ready for what he's going to do. Amen. Which is bring you deliverance. Thank you. Thank he you, wants Jesus. to get you ready for it. Yeah. Thank you right. so much, Jesus. The next scripture. Exodus 10, 13. 10, 13. That's right. <clears throat> so Moses stretched out his rod over the land of Egypt. And the Lord brought an east wind on the land all that day and all that night. When it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. Hallelujah. Keep reading. Thank you, Jesus. And the locusts went up over the land of Egypt and rested on all the territory of Egypt. They were very severe. Previously, there had been no such locusts as they. Hmm nor shall there be such after them. For they covered the face of the whole earth so that the land was dark, and they ate every herd of the land and all the fruit of the trees which the, the hail had left. So there remained nothing green on the trees or on the plants of the fields throughout all the land of Egypt. There you go. Now, again, <laughs> he stripped all the trees in the land of Egypt. Mm. Right. Mm. But, he, but the, in the land of Goshen, everything was still green. Mm. You tell me God don't know how. Yes, he, know how. he knows what to do. Yes. He said, I'm going to show it. And, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened yes. because the scripture says he, he hardened his heart. Because what God wanted to do is to show his power. Yes. See, God wants to show his mighty power, his miracle working power. And he does it, but 
And I'm saying but because it's the only thing he's asked us to do is be obedient to what he says to do. Amen. That's all he, that's all he said to do. Just be obedient. Oh, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. And in this case, he told Moses to stretch out his staff over the over Egypt, and the Lord made these wind blow. And that's where the locusts came in. Just stretch, stretch out your staff. Now, isn't that easy to do? Just, just you got a hand, you got a staff in your hand, just stretch it out. <laughs> he could have said, I don't feel worthy, or I don't feel like it. He, you know, he could have said any of those things. Well, I'm tired of I, I tried that before. You know, he, he just obeyed. He just obeyed. And when he obeyed, victory is on its way. But it hadn't come. Isn't that something? It hadn't come because Pharaoh still said, shut up. I'm not letting him go. Well, he did say, I'm going to let him go. But he, he, he didn't. Because, um, all right, let's, let's go to the next one, which is Exodus 10 and 21. Right after where he was. Mm -hmm. 10, 21. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness which may even be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt, three days. They did not see one another, hmm. nor did anyone raise from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwelling. No, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> three days, too. It's like, it's like, you know, when I was studying this, I said, you know, because I had a whole lot of other stuff about the blood, and I said, no, this is it. The Lord wants us to know that he is supreme. He does what he will and how he wants to do it, and all we have to do is follow. Darkness. So much darkness that the folks were scared to move anywhere. But all Israel had light in the places where they lived. <laughs> oh, Lord. So Pharaoh, Pharaoh, he got kind of scared then. He said, well, go on and worship the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he said, only, only your women and children can go with you. Mm -hmm. to leave your flocks and, and your herds behind. Moses said, oh, no, we're not going like that. <laughs> if we're going down, my, 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 our wives and our flocks, my dog and my cat is going with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 you're not going to. We're not going to have you this thing. We're going to do the whole thing. The whole show. To me, this is an awesome story. It's an awesome story. Thank you, Lord. It ought to really give us a lot of faith. Knowing that we belong to God and God's going to bring deliverance to us. All we have to do is just be obedient to Him. That's all. That's all He asks us to do. Just do what He said do. Mm -hmm. Holy so Lord. Moses said, you got to allow us to, you know, we got to have, have our animals because we need to make some sacrifices. And, uh, we can't and we, do that. We, we have, we, no, we can't do that. So the Lord said, okay. And Pharaoh said, he actually told him, said, well, you get out of my sight. Don't come back again. And you come back again, you don't die. And Moses says, okay, I'll never appear to you again. I'm, I'm, I'll just, Get out of your face, and we'll see what happens. So then, now the Lord said, I'm going to get the big guns out now. <laughs> Read the next scripture, elect, uh, Exodus 11. I didn't say what verse, so just start with one. Hallelujah. And the Lord said to Moses, I will bring the more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt, after which he will let you go from here. Uh, and when he lets you go, he will surely drive you out of here together, all together. Speak now in the hearing of the people, and let every man ask from his neighbor, and every woman from her neighbor, articles of silver and articles of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt in the sight of Pharaoh's 
servant and in the sight of the people. Keep, keep reading. You're going to read the whole chapter here. Then Moses thus said, The Lord, about midnight, I will go out into the midst of Egypt. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sits on the throne, even to the firstborn of the female servant, who is behind the handle, and all firstborn of the animals. Then there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as was not like it before, nor shall be like it again. But against none of the children of Israel shall a dog move his tongue, against man or beast, that you may know that the Lord does make a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Now, do you hear what he said? Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to go through here, I'm going to kill all the firstborn of the Egyptians, <coughs> all the firstborn of the evil of the animals. said, but you won't even, a dog won't even be hurt in the Israeli camp. Hallelujah. Not even your dog, not a dog going to bark. I won't even frighten them, so they'll be barking. They won't even know what's going on. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we serve a God and a half. Amen. I mean, I'm saying a God and a half. <laughs> I don't know what, well, I don't know how to express it, but a, a, a mighty God. A mighty, a mighty, mighty God. Mm. But among the Israelites, not a dog will bark at Probably any man or, or animal. And then you'll know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. <clears throat> so Moses uh, said he, he left Pharaoh and he said Pharaoh refused to listen so, so that all these wonders would be multiplied. And they, all these things he, he had done before Pharaoh, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he wouldn't let the Israelites go out of the country. So here we go into chapter 12. And uh, we'll see what's going on here. Exodus 12 and 7. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts on... Now, where, where are they going to get this blood from? Maybe yeah. back up the oh. uh, fifth verse. Back up a little bit. Your oh. lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire, with unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw, nor boil at all with water, but roast it in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. Mm -hmm. You shall eat none of it, excuse me, you shall let none of it remain until morning. And what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist and sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand. So you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. All right, 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Oh, 13. Okay. Now the blood shall be a sign for you in the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Now did you hear that? Yes. 
The plague shall not be on you when I scratch the land. Talk about recession. We're not participating. That's right. <laughs> Amen. We're not participating. Uh -uh. Whatever's going on in the world, we don't participate in it. That's right. Don't even don't even let it come out of your lips no matter what right. how hard things are, because things are gonna be better for you right. as long as you do it what God told you to do. Yes. Now, if you're not doing what I told you to do, that's something different. But yeah. if you're living for God, I don't mean that you never did any, made any mistakes. That's not what I'm talking about. But if you know what God told you to do, and you're not doing it, then you can't expect God to work in your life. Yeah. But if you just do what he told you to do, yeah. God's going to work. Yes, he is. I mean, there is absolutely no doubt about it. <laughs> he said, now, I want you to put this blood on your doorpost, mm -hmm. and when I see the blood, I'll pass over. And no destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. It reminds me of the scripture in the song. It says, a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come to thee. Mm. Only with thine eyes shall I see the reward of the wicked. Wow. A thousand shall fall at thy side. I was thinking of all the people that have been afflicted with the flu. Mm. I haven't hit, heard another the saint die in God brought everybody out. Amen. 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 Not that they could not have, but if you trusted in the Lord, he's he going to bring you all out. We, 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 we got to believe, folks. Amen. We got to believe. Mm -hmm. So we commemorate the fact that let's let's go to uh, the next scripture, uh, 14 and 16. 14 and 16, mm -hmm. it says, But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Now, after Pharaoh let them go, he had second thoughts about it. And so they were going to the river over the sea. And so they said, let's go catch them. But God had opened up a sea, a, a, a way through the sea for the children of Israel to pass by, pass through. And so when Pharaoh's host decided they were going to go in, then the, then the waters came back together and they were all drowned. And that's where we get the old Negro hymn, Pharaoh's army got drowned. And, oh, Mary, don't you weep. Mary, don't you weep. Pharaoh's army got drowned in. Oh, Larry, don't you wish. Don't you moan. <laughs> Woo! I, 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 I was thinking that, 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 that the scripture that um, um, Perkins read. read, and he said that um, I have one more play. And he said, and, 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 and God said, Glory, he said, Pharaoh won't let you go this time. As a matter of fact, he, it's not that he just won't let you go, but he gonna like dry. And he did. He said he drove them out. He was glad about it. 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 He was sick of the people. Because they were making his land nothing. Desolate is the word. That's a good one. Thank you. Making it desolate. Oh my God, my God. 